A few weeks after we arrived to the UK, we had to go to Leeds, the closest town where me and Naomi could do our biometrics to receive British residential permit. We made an appointment online, went there, stayed overnight and then returned to Robin Hood's Bay. I didn't film the process of taking biometrics as we were in a rush and I don't think I was allowed to anyway. The whole process was easy though. Leeds is three hours away from Robin Hood's Bay where we took a bus to Scarborough and then a train to York and from York to Leeds. I uh, went there with Naomi uh, by myself and Pete met us in Leeds because he was in Dublin before. After visiting the immigration office we went to Mowgli Indian restaurant for lunch. Just while passing by and saw it, we didn't know what it is so we decided to check it out and we liked the interior a lot and the food was good although the portions were quite small though they tell you before you order that the concept is sharing you have to order several portions and share with each other didn't turn out to be very cheap but was quite tasty I personally love Indian cuisine. I've been to India several times and I adore tasting new dishes because uh, every time you come there you try something new because the country is so big and the cuisine is so variable. We didn't walk a lot because it was drizzling. Just drummed down to the river, looked around and went to the corn exchange. Leeds has always been an industrial city, now it's more famous for its shopping centers, numerous, numerous shops. There are a few art galleries and museums, we didn't go to visit them because we didn't have a lot of time. Leeds was a small manorial borough in the 13th century and it became a major center for the production and trading of wool in the 17th and 18th centuries and then a major mill town during the Industrial Revolution. The first day was rainy, so we spent most of the time in an unusual shopping center located in the building of the former corn exchange. Corn exchanges in England are buildings which were originally created as a venue for corn merchants to meet and arrange pricing with farmers for the sale of wheat, barley and other corn crops. The word corn in British English denotes all cereal grains such as wheat and barley, not only corn as you might have thought. With the repeal of the corn laws in the 19th century, a large number of corn exchanges were built, particularly in the corn-growing areas of eastern England. However, with the fall of price of English corn as a result of cheap imports, corn exchanges mostly ceased to be built after the 1870. I just popped into these small stores and uh, took some photos and videos and enjoyed the ceramics and other works uh, 
uh, everything is so interesting in the shops. You don't have to buy necessarily, it's like visiting a gallery and uh, look for different craft work and just enjoy the textures, the atmosphere, the colors. And I found an absolutely beautiful bookshop with lots of uh, creative uh, art magazines and books. And I spent there maybe an hour or so while Naomi and her daddy were having uh, coffee uh, downstairs. At this point I was told that I am not allowed to uh, make photos or videos uh, opening the magazine, so I stopped. We rented an Airbnb apartment in Round Hay area. It is suburbs of Leeds. It's like 30 minutes by bus from the center of Leeds. And you can check out the flat uh, short video room tour uh, in the description. Uh, not only in the description, in the link above. And uh, Round Hay is famous for its huge park where we spent the next day before we took the train back to Robin Hood's Bay. Round Hay Park was launched in medieval times when Norman lords used to create enormous hunting parks in northern England. The park known as Round Hay was created as a deer park by a rich baron and passed several times from one wealthy family to another. In 1803, Thomas Nicholson bought it to make a part of a private park for his family. In 1871, the mayor of Leeds organized the purchase of the park for the people of Leeds. The following year, the, there was a huge celebration with fireworks, music and dancing. Queen Victoria's son, Prince Arthur, officially opened the park to 100,000 people, cheering and shouting with delight. We lived seven minutes walk from the park, so we went there to have a breakfast uh, at a cafe with a view over the lake. Peter's having a strange combination of thick pancakes, bacon and maple syrup. I prefer the usual eggs benedict. We liked it here. Such little trips, whether they are on business or holiday, are always nice and relaxing. The joy of moving by train, by car, by foot usually lifts up my mood, and those new pictures I see give me a boost of creative energy. It's a recreation of Monet Garden, which leads to his home in France near Paris. <laughs> 